Being uh, 7 o'clock, call the meeting to order. Uh, there's a few changes in the uh, in the agenda. We will be postponing uh, agenda item number seven, and also uh, number four. Is that correct, Sue Walsh? Yes. So I'll accept the motion. So moved. On Second. The amended agenda. Motion been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Walk-ins? Walk-ins. Uh, contract for the transfer station Loda. Kevin? Yep, thank you. Um, article 4, right of me, April 13th, town meeting 2009, authorized $175,000 to replace the front end loader at the transfer station. The current loader is a 1987 Volvo L90 with 30,050 hours on it, which is about the equivalent of 550,000 miles. Um, it's beyond its useful life, and we've looked into a replacement for it. We've looked at a Caterpillar 928 HZ uh, through the Commonwealth bid program. Um, I had gone out there with the mechanic and the transfer station foreman to look at the machine, make sure it'll be applicable to everything we're using it for in the transfer station. Um, it's a very decent price that we have through the uh, state bid plan. Um, we're looking to outfit um, the new machine with a snow plow to use this winter um, and also keep the old machine and use it as a snow plow also. We're figuring um, probably instead of getting a contractor, we'd save about $100 an hour using that machine during snowstorms. Um, the piece of equipment would be funded by borrowing against the transfer station enterprise fund for $135,000 and $13,000 beyond that. Uh, from the snow budget to purchase a plow. So we'd be looking for a total of $150,000. Uh, the selected motion be moved to the Board of Selectmen, award the contract for the purchase of the Caterpillar 928 HZ wheel load <coughs> and associated accessories from Southworth Milton Incorporated uh, for an amount not to exceed $150,000. Thank you. Uh, what was the question from the Board? What was the amount there? The total was 150 um, with the pricing. It's increased on the paperwork I gave you. Um, part of the reason is the state bid comes with a um, with an option for a seven-year warranty on the product. But one of the things that we have for use with that is the amount of hours that we have. The warranty would only be good for three years, three and a half years. Okay. So we're able to cut back some of the money on that. And it was also a couple attachments that we were looking if we could use there, but we've cut back on those also. So this would be for 150. 150 would be the request, yes. Okay. Just Kevin, I, d I didn't. What were the um, savings you said we were going to save from the snow, being able to snow plow? We figure right now we're paying a contractor $125 an hour for a loader, a manned loader. Right now, say on average, we pay our guys $20 an hour straight time, $30 an hour overtime. So if we put a man in the old machine, um, basically on average cost us $25 an hour. So the difference would be $100 an hour, we'd say, by keeping that old machine around. So if we're going to multiply that out, I mean, that could add up to tens of thousands of dollars over the course of a year? Hopefully we don't get that much snow this right. year, but that other machine is old, it's tied in, in you know. So you're going to use the old machine out on the streets and keep the new machine at the transfer station? We'd keep the new machine at the transfer station and also use it possibly out in the driftway or, or wherever else we can once they clean up the transfer station. And you said it was one, the 13000 that's coming from the snow budget, mm -hmm. so the machine is 137 Is that how we're getting to the 150 or is it 150 The machine's plus? about 135 We might okay. have some modifications to make with some welding in order to use the equipment. Um, move the different dumpsters around that we have for attachments or couplers. Um, we're not exactly sure of those costs, so they come out and take a look at it and just uh, square it all up. But um, 
Correct. It's about thirteen thousand dollars for the. Uh, now, do we v we don't put a motion for that though? That isn't that's just coming out of the expense, right? So we're not going to make a motion. What I was going to do is purchase it all through the one contract for the hundred fifty thousand dollars, and then just fund it through the thirteen through the snow. That makes sense. And so the motion tonight will be for one thirty-seven. No. You make a motion to buy the entire machine with the snow plow on it. It'll be parsed into various accounts. So it's one fifty-three. So are we are we actually funding the snow by thirteen grand? So no, no. no. All you're doing here is you're awarding a contract to purchase a piece of machinery. Okay. So the d just so the public knows that the dollar impact is one thirty-seven from the transfer station bonded, thirteen thousand from the correct snow expense budget. And you should Thanks. make sure you give that revised amount to Jane. Hello. Kevin, just uh, getting back to the use of the machine after after it does its work down the landfill. It could be put out the road. You said on that driftway. There's no reason <coughs> why the no machine couldn't be put out anywhere in town. Is there if the work was done at the landfill? Or? Correct. If the work was done at the landfill, um, there's no reason it couldn't go anywhere. Um, it'd be a great machine to use anywhere. I know Mike would love to have it in the mm -hmm. plowing anywhere at any time. Um, and, and it might even be something that we look at in the future, depending on how we want to attack the snow. If we get hit with a bad enough storm, we might want to postpone doing the transfer station first and get that machine right out mm -hmm. the street. Yeah, I think it's it's important to note, I think, uh, that this money is being borrowed and it is the, the transfer station enterprise fund. Uh, very important because I'm not sure that this was an out-and-out -out purchase that under the circumstances, the financial circumstances now, uh, I think would be probably saying no to it. So, mm -hmm. because we're just, uh, I think anything that's, that's going to be bought outright is going to have a problem uh, getting through. John, Kevin, I had a couple of questions. Is it <coughs> any way we can dedicate that to the harbor in North Scituate or Al? I mean, we spend we spend what five thousand dollars each snow and ice cleanup. Can't we say that that will be the machine? So the we're going to review our whole snow policy. Actually, um, this week we're going to try to clear it down a little bit and figure out what we're going to do, how we're going to adjust the machines. We'll meet with Mike, um, myself, Al, and Trisha to just go because over how we're going to set it up. If we have, we're keeping the old one, so we yes. have that piece of we'd have a piece of equipment all the time. I, I think the idea of the old one that Mike was looking at is possibly putting that up in the West End right? Um, and just using that old machine up in the West End. He's had good luck with that in the past up there. Um, we would okay. have to, I don't want to spell down. out Mike's, um, right. Mike's whole snow program. And without getting too technical, is this, I got a machine last summer mm -hmm. with a quick coupler on the front. <coughs> mm -hmm. Does that, is that, why couldn't you get an IT that so well, we'll have drop, a quick coupler on it, so but, drop but the we have all the Volvo accessories up there, and all the dumpsters have been fitted out for a Volvo. Right. Um, and the difference is the lowest machine was the Caterpillar machine. Right. So the quick coupler is about a $3,000 item, and there might be some minor modifications to hook up to our dumpsters. So you didn't, all right. But okay. it's it's a very nice machine with the state bid because the state obviously buys many oh, of I, them. I um, called my salesman today, and he said that's... That's it's got L3 price. tires on right. it, which which are very expensive, and right. you know the whole. It's got a good setup on yep. it. Yep. Sure. And it's got the tier three emissions and everything else. So. That's well, all. Thank you. Motion, if there's no other comments. Move that the board of selectmen award the contract for the purchase of the Caterpillar 928 HC wheel loader and associated accessories to Southworth Milton Inc. of Milford, Mass, for an amount not to exceed one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you. We're skipping over number four, Sea Walls, and going on to the Oreo restaurant. Is the proprietor here? We're a little early. It's actually 715. 715, okay. We can uh, maybe go to um, the resignation of the Social Recycling Cooperative, number eight. It's Would you like a uh, motion, Mr. Chair? I'd love a motion. Thank you. 
Move the Board of Selectmen vote to accept Mike Breen's resignation from the South Shore Recycling Cooperative and further that the Board thank Mr. Breen for his many years of participation on the Recycling Cooperative on the Town's behalf. Second. Uh, discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Let's get down this. Uh, Can I bring up one other thing? You should, yeah. Minutes? Um, and maybe um, Superintendent Martin may want to speak of it as well, but we've got to, we've got to assign a, a person to be um, part of that conference call about getting the special funding mm -hmm. for the uh, um, Wampatuck yes. school. Mm -hmm. um, do you want to... Do you have a date on that or anything? Um, Tuesday, October 27th, 4 o'clock, uh, my office. Can we come in remotely or do, should we be at the conference? At the you have to be there pro probably. No, I don't think that would be a problem. Just let me know. So the two cho it has it been chosen. The twenty seventh is the date. MSBA has confirmed it. October twenty seventh at four. That's a Tuesday night. That's next week. It would last hour, hour right. and a half, maybe somewhere around there. I'd be happy to do it if, unless Tony, you can. It'd be maybe tough for me to get there if you. You want to. So you'll do it as of now, and if it changes, it changes that would be fine. So all, one of us just needs to be there. That would be great. Okay. Yep. And if you need to do it remotely, just let me know. We just set it up a little bit differently. It's not yep. a problem. Okay. Okay, but that's that's covered anyway. Thank you, Tony. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> nine. Number nine. There were appointments. Do we have any? Uh, sure. Move that the Board of Selectmen reappoint Jane Lepardo as Treasurer Collector for the three years subject to satisfactory performance based on mutually agreed upon goals and objectives. Second. Motion has been made <coughs> and seconded. Discussion to the Board. Was, was she here? Was it the first one a three year term also? Yes. It was. Well, oh, that went quick. Good. She's done a great job. Uh, motion has been made and seconded. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That's unanimous. Trisha, would you, while we're waiting, uh, we've got the other one. 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 You're good. So, yep. We're going to leave Kevin in bated breath here, trying to figure out. Move that the Board of Selectmen <laughs> appoint Kevin Cafferty as the town's representative on the South Shore Recycling Cooperative. Second. Discussion? I'm not so sure about this. Okay. <laughs> I'll probably do you a favor by doing that. But, uh, <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That is unanimous. Now we can <coughs> wait a few minutes, if we'd like. Or Tricia can give us one third of her town administrator report, and we can come back to it later. Sure, we can do uh, the first item if you want. Go ahead. Good. Which is um, the second installment of our expenditure and revenue month to month monitoring. Um, I think it, it's self explanatory. First, on the expenditure side, um, we're doing relatively well, mostly in um, gas and fuel, which I think is partially attributable to some of the changes that Al and the DPW have made um, in diesel and fuel contracts. Um, I do have concerns, as the board should, about fire overtime, which is um, a little bit of concern. But again, noting that those but that budget line item was reduced um, pretty significantly between over FY09 to FY10. On the revenue side, that's really where we need to be tracking, and again, is probably driving once again our town meeting they're off considerably not considerably I don't want to unduly alarm folks but um, under when you compare this period of FY10 to FY09 you can see that the receipts for the same periods are are less than they were mm -hmm. uh, in real estate a little bit in, a little bit in permits and inspections but what we already know to be true motor vehicle uh, running again not huge numbers since we're only one quarter into the fiscal year, but it's good to just see where the increases and decreases are falling relative to both revenues and expenditures, and I'm happy to answer any questions. 
Just one question, Trish, is there any way we can get a year to date so it's easy to look, you know, sometimes, well, that's that's comparing year to date total as a, like a. Well, yeah, you would add up oh, the I three see. together. You'd Isn't that right totaled? To over you mean, no, you mean not, like a running total of year to date, you know, for last year, for last year. Yeah. See how the year to date is the yeah, thirty-nine right. million, right? Compared to the ten. Oh, right. That's okay. What asking. Whereas there may be timing differences if we had year to date through September. Okay. It might be. Sure. No, it's a work in progress, so I'm yeah. happy to enhance and improve it. Where do you get the thirty-nine million? Yep. You know, just and I think it's important to note that we've been saying this, I don't know if anyone's been listening, but we've been saying this for a while now, we're going to continue to say it, I think. Uh, it's, it's, it's not going to get any better. It's, uh, there are a lot of people who know more about the economics of it than I do, uh, who say that we're, you know, we're in the back end of the curve. We haven't seen the worst of it yet, so uh, in this in this section of the country, whether it be from housing, whether it be from revenues and everything else. So I certainly hope they're wrong, but let's keep that in mind as we make our decisions as we go along. Uh, it's, it's not going to get any better. Thank you. Tricia, we can get back. Is, is there any other questions? I'm sorry. Any other comments on? No, I think it's great that this is <coughs> We can now go 7:15. Uh, we can go to the discussion on the uh, oral restaurant. Should we not coming up? Nice to see you all again. How are you? Fine. Hi. 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 Um, the floor is yours. If you just introduce yourself once again for the. Uh, for Martin Kim. Pomeroy, Burkoff Goodman. Probably King or restaurant. Thank you. Okay. Um, you just spent a couple of minutes, so just give you a summary of why we're here. Yep. Um, back in November, we made application for a liquor license. On uh, April, um, April 7th, the board voted to approve that liquor license. On May 28th, the ABCC voted to approve it. Um, subsequent to that, discussions occurred between the landlord and the tenant about reducing the size of the space. And on September 14th, they amended the lease to reduce the size of the premises from 4,250 square feet to 2,100 square feet um, in a different location but in the same building. Um, so on October 1st, we made application to alter and change the location of the premises. Um, on October 6th, notices were sent to all of the abutters. Green cards have all been returned. Uh, on October 8th, notice of the application was published in the Situate Mariner. And um, we're basically here. Change is relatively minor, but to seek approval for uh, the alteration of the premises. And looks like it's probably it's about cut in half. Would that be size wise? Yeah, it's about, it's about right. Now, I looked at the plans. It looks yeah. really nice. 62 seats, I saw. Yes, yes. Right. You want to tell us a little bit about the your background, are you the owner? Sure, the yes, if I may, please. Um, so, sit down. Okay, great. Um, <laughs> my name's Robin King. Uh, I grew up in Situate. Um, moved away for a bit and worked at a bunch of different restaurants uh, in Boston, um, Colorado, California. Um, moved back to Situate. I uh, live over on Vernon Road. Me and my wife, we get a little boy. Um, my wife will be the general manager of the restaurant. She, as well as in the restaurant business. Um, and really, what we're looking for is a it's a really nice homecoming, to be quite honest with you. We're, we're looking to do uh, what we've been both doing for quite some time, which is uh, excellent food, excellent service. Um, what's sort of the family atmosphere that we bring to, you know, the town of Situate growing up here? It's, it's, uh, it's an amazing experience so far, I'll tell you that. <laughs> um, Oro Restaurant's going to be uh, 62 seats. Um, where our main focus is on seasonal New England ingredients, um, with a lot of emphasis on fish because you couldn't ask for a better situation on where to, you know, uh, on having everything right there. Uh, and we're just trying to get everything done in there and get open as soon as possible. <laughs> have you have you owned a facility before? Or is this your first restaurant? Uh, as an owner, no. This is my first restaurant as an owner. Um, before this, I was at a restaurant in Boston, Stella, for about five years. I was the executive chef there. Right. 
Has your name ever been on a liquor license? I assume you have a. Yeah, I know you have a liquor license. Uh, no, it has not. Okay. No, it has not. No. So there's been several meetings over the last months here about the seriousness of that. So just, I assume you're going to do this tip certification stuff and make sure that. Absolutely. Actually, know, what we uh, what we intend on doing is once. Um, uh, pretty much all the interior build that is complete and we have a staff um, we'd like to actually bring in um, sort of two phases number one we're going to do a tip certification for all of our employees front and back of the house as well as um, first responder EMT so on and so forth so the actual whole staff um, is trained in both okay. and what's your potential opening <coughs> date <laughs> hopefully <laughs> uh, I'd love to be open um, at some point in January um, you know, the original uh, plan was for the holidays, but at this point, it's just not realistic, you know. Um, it's also a hard time to open, to be honest with you. Um, I'd love to be open sometime in January. Great. Further well, comments from the board? Just, just a few. Uh, well, what's the name, derivation of it? Oro? Yeah. That's a good question. Um, my son's name is Owen Robert, so we took the O, the R, and the O and came up with Oro. Fair enough. Just curious, out of curiosity, um, when you complete the uh, tip certification, if I think it would be a, a good gesture if you would at least notify um, Ken Donovan in our office that it's been completed, so Absolutely. that the board would know that. Um, Absolutely. And um, I noticed here, I know you said 62. It's 65, right? That's what you're looking for, for seating capacity. Yes, it is. Um, we're right now we're that going makes with a difference, 62, three seats, that's but good. you know, depending on. <coughs> so it could be different con configuring the table, so on and so forth, and you know maybe there's a couple extra bar stools or something like that. But 65 is the cap, but we're rolling with 60 to 62 now. And just out of curiosity, is it cathedral ceiling? That's what it looks like in the building. Is that what's going on? Is that at least in the porch. Sort of. Um, it's they basically ripped everything out on the inside. Mm -hmm. um, and to be honest with you, when I walked into there for the first time, I didn't recognize it. To be honest, I mean we all remember. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the yeah. lotus and the flounder and all that. It just looked very different. Um, very high ceilings, if I had to put a number on it, probably you know, 20, 20 something feet. Uh -huh. Not so much cathedral, it's almost sort of taken on a look of a uh, carriage house, so to speak. Interesting. I guess you could say. Um, but the natural light that's landed there is amazing. It really is. Good, good, good luck. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Keeping in mind, we, we, we've already voted this license. Correct. A year ago, whatever it was, so it's the motion tonight really is just to amend it down I guess the hours will be the same everything will be the same as as we voted the original license and if this motion passes except for the size John you said you was just gonna relocate it inside I was looking at your plan and I I can't make head or tail of it you're gonna start gonna be in that corner where the previous restaurant was no uh, before a while ago it was located in a different part of the building and now we have relocated to what used to be the old flounder. And oh, that all is right. where the restaurant will be. All right. Before okay. it was um, in another place, actually, where the old Welch Company. Oh, all right. It was actually more central was. before. Right. Yes. And you moved it north. Mm -hmm. I see. All right. Yeah. Further discussion? I was glad to see you. You smiled when you said it's been a heck of an experience instead of weeped. <laughs> it's. Uh, <laughs> It's been a, it's it's been yeah. it's been an experience. Yeah. <laughs> great. Motion. Motion, if I may. Move okay. that the board of selectmen vote to grant the application of Oro Restaurant LLC doing business as Oro, at 146 to 164 uh, Front Street, Situate, Mass, to amend their common vicular's all kinds of alcoholic beverage beverages license by altering and reducing the premises. The restaurant is being reduced from 4,250 square feet to 2,100 square feet. Uh, in the same building. Second. Okay. Uh, further discussion from the board, from the floor. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well done. Okay. I'll see you soon at the restaurant. Huh? <laughs> you will. Thank you. Uh, the next item, item number six, <coughs> is a discussion. Uh, and a vote on the special town meeting budget articles. Uh, and I, be, as we go through these articles, if anyone, any board member feels like they want to present one of them the town meeting, just volunteer. It's as simple as that. Mom. If we don't, then it's, doesn't it default to the chair? It doesn't, if it doesn't <laughs> default to the chair, so. Uh, volunteer. I know Sean has expressed an interest in doing one of them on 
Rose Lane. Yes, I'll, if that's all right with you. That's fine. And the rest of the board. Yeah, yeah it's not within stone. Four. Sure. But that's uh, the way we'll go if someone wants to do one of them. All right. <coughs> uh, Tricia. Special town meeting articles, budgets. Sure. Um, article one is the article to balance the budget due to a number of shortfalls that we've previously discussed here, most notably a decline in local receipts and um, local aid from the state. So what you have in your meeting material packet for the estimated reduction on the town side uh, is an itemization by department. Uh, I asked each department head to identify a departmental level cut on, uh, for through June 30th. These are all itemized in the attached, um, but the total that has been identified is $126,000. $400. Um, I want to thank all the department heads for stepping up to the plate and offering these cuts. And as I said, these were ones recommended by themselves. I did not go and make those cuts. Um, they offered them themselves. I will just want to hit sort of some of the most notable ones. Uh, most notably, they, they will delay a cruiser purchase in the police department. And that's around 16880 And some anticipated but non-essential equipment replacement in the fire department will also not be replaced to the tune of $13,000. you will note on the summary sheet that the recommended reduction percentage-wise to the fire department was actually higher. But since we're already not going to purchase a new command vehicle for the fire chief, which we talked about previously at our last meeting. I did not want to double damn him and add an additional amount. So um, as just to recap, there's 58000 that has been identified and already approved capital items from uh, remaining unexpended bond proceeds that was approved at the April town meeting. Mm -hmm. 40000 of that was for a command vehicle for the fire chief. There was 22,000, I mean 35,000 appropriated for software in the fire department. That bid price has come in at 22,000, so we have uh, the difference between there, the delta that we can uh, move over. And also another software EMS upgrade was already purchased for an estimated price of 25,000 and it came in at 20,000, so there's a 5,000, actually $5,100 surplus for that. So that's 58,000 these reductions here um, is totaling on the anticipated deficit for the town side. Um, I'm happy to, you have the supporting documentation from all the departments. I'm happy to answer any additional questions. Rick? Um, yeah, the supporting documentation, the emails from the department heads and everything is, is not only informative on the dollar values, but it's, I appreciate getting that because I get to see some of the dialogue and the thought process that the department heads have gone have gone through. Um, one of the things I've, I'm unable to make the numbers work out for is the conservation department. And since I'm a liaison to that committee, I'm paying particular interest in that. Um, on the sheet here that you have provided us, the summary chart table, it says it's re being reduced by 1,400. But then on the uh, spreadsheet, budget 171 conservation, be provided as the backup material. On that spreadsheet on the far right, there's three different cuts identified, and they total up to 4,700. Right, and and I didn't I'm not sure what's what's going on. Right, no, and I didn't take what he identified in the line item for that. Um, we just they were asked to cut 0.053 percent. His actual cut was 641 on the 0.053 percent. Right. I, ju I took um, 1,200 of that, but I don't have the specific detail right here. I can get back to no, you. No, no, that, that, that's fine. I just yeah. wanted to make sure I, I could reconcile those three figures with the figure on this line here. One of the things, I mean, there's, you know, different schools of thought about whether you do across-the-board cuts or not. I don't happen to be a member of that school, 
So in some of the cases where folks could identify a reduction in the budget that was significantly more than the 0.053%, but they didn't need it, then I took that. And then we didn't cut $86 from the advisory committee, $72 right. for the beautification committee, things like that. So one, I mean, the Board of Health actual reduction should have been about $980 based on the 0.053. However, there's an allocation in their budget of 7200 for monitoring um, in Musquash Cut that is not needed based on the improvements that seem to be working there now. So we took that entire amount. That helped ease the burden somewhere, but you also see that there's a little more money than is actually the straight 121 cut sure. or whatever number in it. So those are the kinds of judgments that I applied in the same way as conservation identified significantly more, and I took maybe right. more than their cut, but not all of it. If, if I may also, Mr. Chair. Um, I've taken to heart, you've said to us many times since you've come here that uh, town hall and the town is very lean on many em employees and, and staffing and so on, and, I, and I'm encouraged to hear that. Um, I do question, or I just have a question about, we often hear, particularly in your very helpful summaries or news you can use, how the library use is up and recreation department is also up and the number of, of children that they have going through the rec program is is incredible um, and not to say that the other cuts that you're proposing also aren't justified but I'm, I'm wondering if there's a way we could have less cuts on library and recreation given that their growth is is so high Again, not to say that the other departments also aren't inc experiencing increased pressure and increases in things but those are the two that I sort of flagged as I think library use is up 15% or something like that. So, can you just give a little explanation. Well, two comments on that. One is uh, these are reductions recommended by the department head that they feel comfortable living with. So, I want to appreciate their expertise and their ability to manage their department that they feel they can live with. And in this case, it's 0.005%. I think to really answer your question, Rick, is those real kinds of discussions are going to have to happen in FY11, where there's some departments given whatever level of activity or necessity in terms of the essential services they have to the town, we're really going to have to look at. Right. And those are the kind of discussions you're going to have to have in FY11. Whereas now, I'm very comfortable with what they brought forward because in all frankness, they're rather nominal amounts. Mm -hmm. um, and this is mid-year. This, this is sort of just sort of getting through the night. We might have to do it yet again before we meet uh, at the <coughs> April town meeting. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm I'm cognizant of your concern, but I really think those are the type of calls the board's going to be faced with when you look at balancing your FY11 budget. They're all starting to think now. In fact, I sent an email out to them all yesterday, thanking them for these mm -hmm. recommendations, but also to start to think about FY11 as far as maintaining the level of services or reduce levels of services that our residents are accustomed to mm -hmm. that are, I think, much more grave than sort of reduced printing, reduced whatever at this right. time. Okay, that's great. Thanks. I, I really appreciate that, that answer. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Tony, um, Yeah, I, I just go back one quick step and just explain to everybody what we did. We had a financial forecasting meeting about a week and a half ago and we went through all the assumptions that we made in April and as Trish touched on there were you know two or three significant items that decreased um, one of it is the amount of money we're getting from the state state aid went down about a quarter of a million dollars um, um, the local receipts went down on a number of different line items and um, new growth went down considerably too once we got the actual numbers of building permits where people started building. So we had a, a very productive meeting from my point of view where we went through all these things and we identified two or three items that were really still variables. And over the last week, Trish and Mary and Bill and uh, or Paul Donlin have gone through and kind of tried to iron those out. We've made some adjustments to motor vehicle. We've made some adjustments to unemployment expenses, um, one in the positive, one in the negative. Um, discussed uh, changes of some expenses for um, agricultural school and the number is coming in the deficit from the previous budget is coming in just about where Trisha had put it originally at three hundred and fifty thousand dollars give or take a couple thousand um, so as it falls out the two-thirds to one-third split um, 
this the town has to come up with about a hundred and seventeen thousand dollars worth of cuts and the um, <coughs> school has to come up with about two hundred and thirty thousand dollars worth of cuts so that's kind of just a general overview um, the only other discussion that we really had or two points of that are um, the only way to fund these cuts well, there's three ways to fund the cuts are to reduce your expenses to utilize some other sort of cash which would be free cash or the stabilization fund or to do an override I guess would be the, the third one but um, so we discussed those options um, and decided that reducing the cut the cuts and expenses would be the most logical way to go about it this time with all of us knowing that um, that potentially or probably more than likely there's going to be another set of local aid cuts coming within the next couple of months from the state house so um, there is a little bit of free cash available that we would discuss at a later time if we needed to um, but at this point in time we decided that that was not the avenue that we were going to take Joe was there and I, I think that summed, it, summed yeah. it very very well it's so just, uh, at that point in time we gave the two entities their their um, um, unfortunate mission to go try and find out where they were going to make these these cuts to make their departments work and um, um, Trisha has come back with hers and I know Paul Donlin and Bill and Jamie and Sue have been working on it on the school side um, you know at some point if you if you want to have a chance to talk about it and um, and that's where we stand Bill jump in anytime you want uh, if you have any comments to make yeah. Uh, I would just, it's, as we discussed la at the last meeting, you know, we already had our, our rent uh, over the summer in the school department, so we're going back to a cuts. It's very difficult to go back and look at it. So I think the uh, Tricia coming up with the capital to, to give back the capital really helped us close our gap. We did the same thing on the school side. A couple vacant positions or positions that they just came vacant are going to remain vacant. Still have probably when we get right down to it, probably a little bit of a gap still to go, mm -hmm. but you know, committed to getting to that number at some point. The, the only other point I'd like to bring up is, and, and Joe's mentioned it a couple times tonight already, the real problem is not in 2010. You know, the real problem is going to be 2011. And our goal is really to get through 2010 and start the process on 2011 as soon as possible so that we can really get, get ahead of the curve in terms of um, figuring out how we're going to deal with, with um, you know, the tough budget constraints in that year. Rick? Uh, just a question for my own education. I'm a little surprised that I have to ask this question, but the, just because I should know this, but I don't. Um, someone asked me the other day at the village market that about the two-thirds one-third balance between schools and so on and asked me is that legislated or is that just how it's arisen it's evolved it's, uh, if, I, if I may it's, yeah. it's evolved over the years uh, it, it varies a little bit overrides have changed that over the years uh, <coughs> I think at one time I think I can go back to maybe mem remember 60 40 at least that was the number, and then 61, yep. 39, and now to the point of, I think, 66, 33, uh, give or take. So it's just kind of evolved. It's not, no, it wasn't legislated or anything else. Yep, no, that's, that's helpful. Thanks. Like I say, I, I should have been able to answer that myself, but I couldn't. And also so understand the split comes after a lot of expenses are taken Money. out of the top. Yep. So I mean shared expenses. Shared expenses. So right. you've got, you know, you get a bunch of money and then you pay a bunch of bills that they considered shared expenses, such and as, such as insurance, um, yeah. South Shore Vote Tech, yeah. um, federal payroll Pet taxes, interest, pension, retirement, workers' comp, unemployment, Cut. health interest. insurance, FICA. Correct. So there's, you know, there's over ten million dollars of shared expenses that come out of the top. Actually, there's more than that when you look into the state, the cherry sheet expenses and other things like that, which aren't were, are, are a little right. higher. But, you know, $11 million worth of expenses that come out, and then when that net number comes down, that's the formula that's, that's been used to do it. Okay. You know, every town, you know, it's, it's, a, it's just a, it's a worksheet. You know, you could, you could do it by any number of ways. This is just the way that Situate's done it. Yep. Um, and you kind of work on the delta of where you're going from the previous years as opposed to what formula you used to get there. Okay, thanks. Discussions for the, the board? 
on the floor. Anybody? Yeah. Scott. Scott Roberts on behalf of the uh, advisory committee. Looking forward to uh, writing up Article 1. I just want to make sure the numbers are correct. The worst thing you can do is float numbers and they don't match. So I'm assuming that we're working with the 352 639, which is um, 52 million 985 minus the 52 633. And that, and that 352. Almost 353 is what we're trying to solve. And if that's true, that's the number we would call it. Yeah, I'll get you. It's within a couple thousand dollars of that. So the things may have tweaked just a little bit since you got that spreadsheet, but uh, we can get you an updated spreadsheet okay. that'll give you the exact number. Yeah. yeah Again, it's not an exact science. It's, uh, you know, the town cuts around $120,000, and Trisha showed us where she's going to get $126,000. Yeah, and looked at 121 Side. And what we're going to try to explain is the uh, 121 and the two, uh, uh, 200 mm -hmm. the, uh, school. And I just want to make sure that we're all showing the same numbers. Uh, nothing hurts your credibility more than they have different numbers. Uh, and I imagine what we're going to try to do is dovetail it with what we've already published in the motion. Mm -hmm. So the thing that won't change if you stick to your motion. Is the 352 Well, anything could change in the motion, right, Trish? Yeah. Would you be uh, amending it on the floor? Well, first of all, it's not amendment. What we're talking about is the article. Right. And right after that number, it says, or a greater or lesser sum. Right. So, and again, this will be my first ah. town meeting, and I know we all want to be accurate in the numbers, but the reality is those numbers could possibly change right into the evening of town meeting so as long as you're contingencing and I always tend to not contingent things to death but say the as of publication this is the number that we have and may be subject to change on the night of town meeting but we'll get the numbers yep. Tony like you said it's about 3,000 off I think from the number even the board has tonight because we're constantly refining the number but we'll make sure you'll have it as accurate as we can um, but whatever the number is it is I in the I motion get, I get the numbers from yeah you yeah and then you can you know uh, we'll compare. I just want to make sure again what we're endeavoring to do is as we go forward now is make sure the numbers that I get from Mary are tying to Tony's numbers are tying to the bills numbers in the school department so even though they might look differently arrayed the number is still a number we can all get to the same place on. And could I get those in a print by tomorrow night? Yeah, I don't see. We can get them. I can get them from Tony. And again, it's up. You know, ours is like 117. It's just a little tweaking. Okay, I'll yeah. I'll chase you tomorrow. Yeah, chase me tomorrow. <laughs> right, thank you. Uh, further discussion on Article One. Uh, why don't we just go through them all, and then we'll uh, vote to support them. Article Two, Trisha. Article Two is. The budget that was approved for the Waterways Enterprise Fund at town meeting needs an additional appropriation for revenues to meet expenditures. So that's what Article 2 is about. And they're taking them from the retained earnings. I'm sorry, yes, and taking it. There's <coughs> money there to do that. From Waterways retained earnings. From Waterways, right. yeah. Exactly. And th that's due to just the previous year's numbers coming in lower than we had thought. Yeah. So. We, uh, even though it's an enterprise fund, you have to vote a budget for it every year. So you can have a million dollars in retained earnings, but if town meeting didn't vote the expenditure budget, then you have to satisfy that at the end year. And so we're just taking the surplus to make it all uh, reconcile. And they have ample retained earnings to... More than ample retained earnings to, to cover this in the case of uh, the waterways. Article 3... Wait. I'm sorry, did go you ahead, want to do three. that? No, I will go through them. Go Article through them. 3, same sort of um, methodology, the transfer station enterprise fund, the appropriated budget, and the revenues that were anticipated to meet that budget were short by 24034 on June 30th. Again, um, what we did to reconcile this deficit is Al has reduced the FY10 budget 
to make up because we if you have a shortfall at year end then you have to project that you'll have that you have to meet that anticipated shortfall for the following year al has reduced the fy10 budget for um f um for for the transfer station to meet the projected deficit for that so we should be okay and then for the fy09 oh, the uh, transfer station actually turned back 41,000 so they actually had money in their budget that we're appropriating back in for that so it's again all reconciled for June 30th and, and is that's that what article 3 does is that reduction in expense or revenues uh, was it reduction in ex we underspent the budget by 44000 The revenues, however, did not meet the original right. revenue projection. The gap was closed because of the increase in uh, fees that we charged, but we didn't close the gap as fully because we didn't do that until the middle of the year or something. But this reduction of twenty, this reduction of $24,000, is that, are you re reducing expenditures or reducing revenue? We're reducing expenditures in FY10 by that amount. Uh, four. Four is uh, town meeting in 2006 authorized uh, borrowing for a major infrastructure improvement for Roses Lane. That original appropriation, once we went out to bid and got actual des design, well, got actual design of what the actual cost will be to fully construct, was short by $175,000. So we need to go back to town meeting and ask them for an additional authorization on top of the original 06 approval to go out to borrow that additional sum. And this will be realized through Benamins and um, low interest through the Water Pollution Abatement Trust. Uh, discussion for the board on that. Sean, I volunteer to take that article to town meeting, but any other comments? What was the 2006 borrowing? It was, f it's not in here, it was $357,000. Had to do, the increase had to do, according to Al, had to do with permitting, am I correct, Al? The, the increase in permitting for that particular yeah, phase? Uh, two, two factors, one is the project was appropriated in 2006, it's now three years later, things are more expensive. Uh, the reason it was delayed so long was because it went through extensive permitting review by the DEP and I can, well, provide Sean with the uh, 12 inches of reports that had to be done to meet the DEP requirements. I want to have that last consumed, year. I'll give it back to Joe. That consumed <laughs> a, a good portion of uh, of uh, the original budget that was forecasted. So this $500,000, is that the total expense for engineering as well as implementation? That's, that's the full out cost of everything, including, yes, that's the full out cost of all expenditures associated Right. So just so everybody knows, Betterman is those people that are and benefiting from the past. Actually, the 175 that's being requested will undoubtedly uh, not all be used. Mm -hmm. Now, question about the Betterman. In addition to the Betterman, it says there's going to be low interest loans through the through the trust. That interest will be also paid by the Betterman. Okay. Better. Yes. Right. Okay. Sean's got that one, Article 5. Article 5, uh, Jane Lopardo, our treasurer, was here at the last meeting to explain why, for her, it's really a housekeeping issue and an oversight by the legislature to allow communities to uh, charge this fee, and it's a demand fee that goes from to $15 for um, outstanding tax for excise and demands. She explained this last time she was in. Discussion on that? Not six. And the last one is currently the chief procurement officer is allowed to execute contracts for a period of only three years. That also includes any renewal ext or extension. So what this allows us to do if town meeting accepts it is for the chief procurement officer to enter into contracts for five years. So right now we can't do a three-year contract with an optional year or two years for renewal. This is um, another tool to do an extended contract if, with the caveat that if it's in the best interest of the town to do so. And you are the chief procurement officer. Yes, and this is actually something I'm surprised that the town hadn't adopted earlier. So 
it, it allows you for additional flexibility yep. as well because when you can go out to bid you can do now give me a three year and add alternate for five or optional in between so it gives us a, a different you know more options to consider uh, as far as the assignment uh, I'll take them Let's anybody you might want to do the, the the budget one we'll talk to him about that so any other comments no, I'm <coughs> I'm happy to take any. Uh, take five or six, whatever. It's fine with I'll me. do five or six. Okay. Uh, motion. Motion. Do you want? Why don't you go one by one? I'll do them one by one. Just have a. All right. Move to accept Article One. Support. Second. Move, just move to support Article One. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, move. Move, move to, to support Article Number Two is written. Second. Uh, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Move to accept Article 3 as written. Second. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Four. Move to support Article 4 as written. And a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Move to accept Article 5 as written. Second. 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 Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Move to support Article 6 as written. Second. Aye. Second. Yep. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 And that's unanimous. And, and we'd like to uh, thank the departments individually for, for making those cuts. Uh, cuts that never easy. And in particular, thanks to the school department. I think the, uh, the number was larger and the cuts were, in, in many cases, larger. We know it's not an easy task especially at this time of the year. Uh, again, we wish we could say it's not going to happen again before the year is over, but I think everything we read uh, speaks to that and puts us in that direction. Well, we'll see. Get through this one first and worry about the next one later. All right, thank you. Uh, next. Ten. Uh, yeah, did we do all this? Yeah, we did. The rest Trisha, of back to you, the rest of your report. Uh, the second part of the report recommends that the board consolidate the two separate cable committees we have right now, one uh, for that existed for purposes of renegotiating the cable contract, and the second for reviewing and recommending disbursements from the cable fund. Um, as I note in the narrative in my report, we're really sort of moving in a different direction now that the contract is settled. Uh, we're actually in limbo in a few areas because we need to sort of redo this organizational thing so we can get some members together to s work with um, the cable studio manager and determine the permanent or whatever status of that position, uh, cable studio policies, procedures, programming, what gets put on, what doesn't get put on the cable, and to use this group as a recommending body to the selectmen as we move forward with all the new things that come with the cable um, license. So this is for your consideration. So I know um, this is something that hit my plate as soon as I walked in the door but needed time to get up to speed on and, to, and now we're in a position, <coughs> I think, to really start to move forward on it. Will we will we just ban the two committees as they asked now stand and then form another one? That's that what would, I'm suggesting that, would, yeah. um, that you do. There was overlap between. I mean, there's like ten lines on those two lists, but there's only six individuals mm -hmm. because myself, Vinnie Calicious, and Tony served on both of them, or the town administrator before I was here served on both of them. In ten years, eight years, seven years, I th did you do how long a license did you do? Ten. Yeah. You'll need to reconstitute that committee again because you should have a specific committee for purposes of negotiating the license. Okay, so we'll. Right. And the majority of it was done through the attorney yeah. bill. August. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, Rick. So if if Verizon wants to come in, so we've talked about the fact that Comcast, the, the thing we signed with Comcast is does not restrict other people coming in, other mm -hmm. organizations. So if, if Verizon comes in, even though they're not cable, does that still fall in the purview of this committee? Yeah. Well, it depends what we do here, but we discussed that with um, Bill, yeah. the attorney, as well as with the people from 
Comcast, and I don't think Verizon's planning on coming here for another year and a half. Right. Um, but there's a non-exclusive in our in our mm -hmm. contract, and this this contract kind of gives us a base to work off of. To right. What to expect to get from Verizon okay. in terms of the group that you want to negotiate it, that will be appointed by us. Yeah. Okay. Great. And if I may add on to that, the way the contract has been negotiated, as Verizon takes Comcast subscribers, they still have to adhere to the same terms and conditions that Comcast subscribes would yes. in terms of the revenue structure to yeah. the town. Yeah. Okay. Um, so are you looking for a, are we, do we want to vote on this or do we want to no, I think mull this over or what's up? I think we'd have to go on the agenda to a to uh, disband the committees down a future agenda. Right, I'd like to do that at the next. I wanted to float this idea so, to okay. you, and then at the next meeting, um, we we could go forward, I suppose, and do what it, we know you normally do for solicit mm -hmm. interest yep. because there's seven and you have six now, yep. and then formally do it at your next meeting. Okay, so that'll be the plan. Sounds great. If not the next meeting, the one after the bidding plan. Well, I'm not counting the November second yep. meeting as yep. any, so I'm thinking the third week in November or something. Mm -hmm. Sounds okay. great. Thank you. One thing, Trisha, it's not on your report, but you and I talked about it. I don't know if you want to touch on it here. And that's that working meeting that you talked about. Do you want to, you know, among the different boards and just... Sure. Um, we talked about it at the last meeting, and yeah. so um, I, I sort of individually talked to most of you, not all of you, and uh, there seems to be a consensus that you'd like to do that, so we'd like this evening to set a date. I have suggested to Joe um, a Saturday morning between 8 and 11 would probably be best, perhaps at the Marine Center, um, since it's a more informal location. And um, obviously, you know, whatever the board's pleasure is in terms of scheduling that meeting, we can accommodate, but that that's sort of the additional thought process on it. Maybe we could, the board could just look at their own cal individual calendars and see if they can come up with some, if we can come up with some Saturday that we're all free for those couple of hours uh, and then send the word out to I imagine the school committee, advisory board, whoever. Does it have to be a Saturday, Joe? Will that work? It have to be. No, it does not have to be a Saturday. It's just that we thought that Saturday was uh, as good as any other day. It could be. It could be some other. It could be some other night. Yeah. One, one of the things is I would like to have it probably in November or early December because the budget instructions and timetables need to go out to the department heads probably the first week in November. And I'd like to have some sense of what the board's overall goals or priorities were for, I think a lot of our discussion's just gonna be generally around FY11 and what's ahead. And I wanna be able to have that knowledge so I can convey it to the departmental staff as they're framing their own budgets for FY11. Again, it doesn't have to be a Saturday, that was just the day we picked. I, I, Saturday, only because I think it, it's convenient for most people and it's it's not convenient for your private time but it's convenient for us because of our work schedules and and usually given the time frame it might be we need if we start at seven and going over figures into the night after a hot long day you know just I prefer it Saturday morning get a fresh start get going and, and plow through it with I we think it works better. But the meeting is more, we're not going over the budget, it's more conceptually and goal-oriented. Yeah. It's and very, very, very general. It's going to be helpful for me to get a sense of what you, you know, think our yep. priorities need to be because we're really going to have to do that. But not only about the budget, <coughs> about I need, you know, to, for us, for you to sort of focus in on your sense of overall town needs, mm -hmm. uh, the general management of the town. So it's all encompassing, but again, in a very general sense, you won't be voting, you won't make any decisions. It's really just a conversation. I think it's important to get the keyboards in town just to sit down and just, so everyone understands with the advisory school, everyone understands. Well, this, Joe, I'm is for there, a point of clarification, it's just with the board, okay, this, right. That's not, sorry. What came out, come out of that might be long, lo, as okay. we go forward, a longer term, a, a, lo, a, a larger discussion with I them. see, okay. Mostly it's yeah, just sort us. of for me okay. and, and yeah. us to go forward with the department. So why don't we just get back, we'll look at our schedule, whether it be Saturday, it may not be, if we all come up with another night, maybe start some night at 6 o'clock, just so we'll do a couple of hours, we'll see. Good idea. Yeah. Okay. Can we go over, while we're talking about yep. schedule, just what our meeting schedules are for the next couple of meetings? I know we have one before the town meeting. 
Pardon? We have one at 6.30 on November 2nd, uh, 7 o'clock on November 17th. And as it looks right now, I believe it's December 1st, um, which is a Tuesday, December 8th, and possibly the 29th if the meeting is needed. Why, why are this, there one on the 1st and the 8th? Just if we if we need to start looking at, uh, I don't know if we'll be looking at budgets that early, if that would be considered very early. For what month? December. December. No. Then we, probably, then we may be able to get rid of one of those or something. I just, now with town meeting me, I'm so used to starting budgets in December that the board looks right. at them usually in December, but now with town meeting being a month, a month later, later, it's yeah and I have the advisory committee's draft timetable too which I need to look at tomorrow that I think there'll be a little it might be moved out a little bit because okay. I want to give them a good month I think to do it <coughs> so that would still put us in the first week of December but I would like to review it before it's presented in mass to the board okay. so December okay. for me is May changeable yeah. okay uh, Next, other business, starting with uh, Rick Donyevid. Um, just about the duathlon. Um, I got a phone call from an individual who was uh, had received the reverse 911 call, which he was appreciative of. Um, a little curious as to whether that was appropriate to use, but uh, I told him my personal feeling was. Uh, it was good to use it because it got the word out fast and I think we received some feedback from various department heads as to why it worked <coughs> that way. But he was most concerned because he was uh, living up on one of the streets that had a road closing on it and he was under the impression that there would be no detours. Um, and I believe that when it was initially presented to us that it was said that there'd be, there'd be no detours. And he was also concerned whether he'd be able to get out of his house because he had a christening that he needed to get to that afternoon. And from some of the wording, and, and he had, he called um, the police department to find out, and um, they had said, we think you'll be able to get out of your house, but we're not sure as to the timing of it. And so I just want to bring this up um, in the sense of, I think the duathlon was a, was overall a good thing, and I know that uh, Nico Afeseko. 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 Okay, I got reasonably close. You know, it was his first time doing it, and so on. Um, and so I absolutely accept the fact there's going to be some hiccups, but I think that phone call was sort of a encapsulation of some of the issues that perhaps next year we can do a little better if we end up doing it. I mean, here's this poor guy saying, I got to go to a christening and I wonder if I can leave my driveway. And he wasn't able to get a straight answer through no fault of anybody's, just sort of a overall lack of communication. Well, this uh, was such a major event. Uh, it may be not a bad idea to have like a debriefing, either public here in front of the selectmen or uh, with the organizers, with the public safety chiefs. Just go over these concerns that they might have. Uh, we could either have it here or we could have it private. Yeah. With them. I don't care what we do. But I think a, a debriefing is probably in order for everyone's sake. I no, mean, sure. Uh, yeah, we do that with um, uh, Heritage Days as we, well. Yeah, yeah, so and and I, I will also just say that uh, I only received one one phone call afterwards that was negative and a lot of people, you know, enjoyed it and liked the fact that the town was being used. So, you know, I don't know about w with you guys, but I didn't get, you know, a, a blistering array of phone calls like we do after some events. So I was going to actually, being a uh, liaison to the uh, Board of uh, Chamber of Commerce, um, touch base with the Chamber of Commerce as well as the Merchants Association. They were meeting uh, tonight, and I couldn't make that meeting, but I'll find out what the feedback from the merchants was, mm -hmm. with yeah, be good. Be interesting. which I think would have um, bearing on the impact of the downtown, because the whole thrust of this uh, event, um, or at least one of the major thrusts of the event was to try to bring business downtown to help yeah. the businesses and if they didn't find that to be effective then um, obviously it certainly bears discussing that whether or not it's a value or whether it's more of a hindrance um, but I uh, I've yet to hear any negative comments nor positive comments but I think we'll find that out in the, the coming days the, the only thing I'd add is they probably couldn't have got a worse day to have <laughs> <laughs> you know the poor 
poor group. Uh, you know, the weather was just terrible. But I did speak to a few people that participated in it, and they said, Sean, will you? No. A oh, couple, so. couple people uh, ran in it, and they. Did you run in, Sean? I was going to get to that later. <laughs> <laughs> they said that the the event itself was one run very professionally, and they were very happy with with the event itself. So that why I said, you know, we'll hear our feedback over the next couple of weeks in terms of what the public thinks. But the, I think the participants thought it was very well run. And we have our own departmental debrief on November 9th. Do you internally? Good. So well, maybe you have that first. First. It's already been scheduled. Yeah. If there's a need. To follow up here yeah, with that's what the plan uh, maybe was. you could put it in your town administrator's report or something, but I didn't realize it was a debriefing. That's great. Mm -hmm. That's great. Uh, anything else from the board? Uh, well, what, what uh, actually, the actually, on? actually, I have one thing. I can, if I can ask Mr. Danny, um, John, when you're talking with the uh, chamber, could you find out if the charities were situate based or not? Because I remember that the charities. They didn't appear to be situate-based charities, but then he said they were like local chapters of situate, and I, I never quite was able to figure that out. I'll confirm that. My understanding was that it was not a local charity, but they were charities in Massachusetts. Well, no, they're, they're, they're um, the I'll Friendship confirm. House, which is yep. pretty local. I mean, okay. there's a lot of situate residents that's actually is being built in Norwell on 123, but yep. but it's, uh, you know, to say it's situate-based, it's not yeah, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. No, and it's not like even situation. It's, yeah, it's, it's, no, it's, it's, it's not a national. I guess that's the, the thrust it's of not it. a it's not a national. It's a very local. Yeah. Uh, many residents of Situate will be uh, using Friendship House. I'll, okay. I'll get the names. And I should get the other organization. Yeah. Right, thanks. Yeah, I'm all set. Thanks. Um, Anna, good. Um, just to follow up on the reverse 911 call, Andrew Vine, Merchant in your Situate. Penny Chris Lane? No. <laughs> okay. Um, reverse 911 came in about quarter of seven Friday night. With where all of this was going to take place, which was down Country Way, to Gannett Road, to Hamlet Road, we had never been informed nor situated that this, we, no one knew where this race was going to go, what the streets would be, whether they would be blocked off or not. Then, Saturday morning, Hollett Street was used rather than um, Country Way. Unbeknownst to it, there was never another reverse 911 call. I guess the bottom line is the 911 reverse call might have been, in point of fact, pointless. Secondly, if, and I sat here while Dr. Nico went through all of this, the merchants <coughs> in the harbor were informed about it. I'm not sure that Greenbush was, and certainly not the merchants in your situate, if that was the approved route. It boils down to, and I know that you love it when I say this, it's all about communication. So later on, you know, when you debrief all of this, that that might be one of the items that needs to be really addressed. Keep The more information we have, the better off we all are. I'm not saying not to do it again, but rather just keep us better informed. I know some of the some of the routes were changed because of flooding. As Tony alluded to, I don't know if it was Hollis Street or not, but you know. And, and again, you know, it comes down to. Uh, I don't know how much it was communicated the routes in, but however, I do. I know that it was written more than one or two articles. No route in the, no, I read them all. Yeah, okay, no I'll take you. And if you said you read them all, I'll take your <laughs> word for it. Believe me. Uh, <laughs> we'll see if we can improve that. Uh, my my only thing is is that you know I think I'm glad to hear that you're doing the debriefing first before they come to the board. Then if it's necessary, come to the board. I will say that um, you know um, yeah. quickly there was a marathon in Burlington, Vermont. It started out all over the town. They they went up, they went back, and everything. It's been going now for the past uh, 25 years. It's one of the largest marathons, certainly in Vermont. And it's the only one in Vermont. But I mean, it, the simply fact is, it went through a lot of burps, a lot of hurdles, a lot of problems, and now it's nationally known. It's a great marathon. It, people want to get into it. This may not be the thing for the town of Situate. It may be pro too problematic. It's the first year they did it, you know, and obviously, you know, each year you learn, you you, you improve upon it. Um, Obviously, the most important thing from our perspective is health and safety. If there is a health and safety issue, then obviously we need to address it. But I think, you know, <coughs> it works great. We'll find out 
and from the facts from the yep. fallout. I think one thing that worked well was the, the satellite parking up at Greenbush. Uh, that lot to the right, you know, away from yep. the station, mm -hmm. uh, half of that lot was filled, and that's the first time those parking places have ever seen a car on them. <laughs> <laughs> so it... Uh, More commuters? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it was, you know, in that respect, it, that was used. That's so that was no, that's great, because yeah, that, that was that's, put to use. And that's maybe, great, actually. You know, maybe... Uh, and that will follow over to St. Patrick's Day and, Her and Heritage Days also, but yeah. there were probably 200 cars up there, give or take. So that was That's great. that was well uh, publicized, evidently to the runners. But all right, uh, um, Rick, I'm all sorry. Yeah, just a, a few things. Um, one, Mr. Chair, can can we put on the agenda in the middle of November to bring up um, the rediscussions on the liquor license violations mm -hmm. and um, maybe ask the police chief to come in so we can discuss um, um, the the frequency of the uh, unannounced inspections and that sort of stuff and try and get a plan um, together for that and, and what sort of um, violations and what sort of you know structure there mm -hmm. should be around that. Would you, Tony, would you like to have a proposed uh, structure presented to us that night as far as uh, Penalties. I can throw something. I, I did some research and saw what other towns were doing and how they handled that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. And I don't. I mean, I can throw some something vague together. But I think yeah, it's probably for discussion purposes as opposed to voting an actual yeah. policy. Okay, if you could get that to the board, I'd yeah. like to see it too. Be prior to. Yeah. And then we'll put it off for November. Oh. And you might want to look at the policy that we, or not the policy, the proposed policy that was done by. Right. Yeah. See, I yeah. think there's Here's two phases to it. The one that I'm most concerned with is um, the uh, serving minors and really the, the um, facilities not adhering to carding people mm -hmm. properly. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a, that's a, there's no ambiguity with that. That's an objective, not subjective decision. You either did it or you didn't do it. And, and that, that structure may be different than other structures in terms of, um, you know, other violations. So, yep, um, you do that. so with maybe the seventeenth, Tim. Sure, I, right, and then the only other thing I'd like to mention um, is that uh, I went to the art show um, for the Graziano for uh, Joshua's run on fr uh, Saturday, Saturday night. So, Sean, there was a really good turnout. The artwork was phenomenal. Did you and tell uh, Joe one couple of things. Yeah, Joe and John, <laughs> you won a couple of things too. <laughs> <laughs> Sean was writing a lot of names, <laughs> and uh, it was a very good turnout. A well-run event. And uh, um, again, for a really bad weather day, uh, a lot of people went out and, and participated. So, uh, um, you know, kudos to that group. Sean? Yeah, I have an easy one and a hard one. I'll start with the easy one. The stop sign at the harbor. All right. Um, I haven't sat on the board yet where we didn't vote a stop sign. Uh. And we did not vote that. That stop sign was voted years ago. It's in the rules and regulations today. By who? By the board of selectmen. Uh, can I see that? Yeah. We s we've talked about it. Traffic rules and regulations actually, uh, uh, Officer Thompson did the research, and uh, when he made the recommendation for the change, indicated it did not require a selectman's vote because it was already in the existing traffic rules and regulations. In fact, it was voted and the sign wasn't there for years. I'd love to see it because okay. we've talked about it and I cannot remember. I can't. So, um, well, that's the easy one. The hard one is Dave Ball has approached a few of us about seawalls. And then this, we're not going to solve this tonight. You know, but in particular, bottom of Jericho Road. We know it, but the audience doesn't know it. What might be a little different is I did talk at, at that event, I did bump into an abutter. And those direct abutters are willing to pay some of the cost. Yeah, that, this is what it all boils down to. Where do we get the money? I mean, one of the agenda items you canceled tonight is because of the funds. But it's a situation that, in case you don't know it, it's $50,000 now, and by the spring it could be a lot more. So I really don't know the answer to it. I just figured I wanted to put it out there and talk about it. And 
see what your uh, thoughts were. Maybe put it on a, uh, and even if we make another uh, make an agenda item, I don't know if we'd would have the answer. But I just like to talk about it. Maybe someone can come up with an idea. Not not, not to speak negatively of it. I think of course it's it's a safety issue for all those people. But we uh, again, as you just said, money. I don't know where. You know, I, I, until we found out a cost, I think it's one thing for people to say they'd pay for it, but it's another thing to engineer it and find out how much that would cost. And, could we? And, and maybe we could somehow. Could we? Well, uh, can I yeah. just through betterments like the sewer, like all right? Yeah. Yes. And has that been done before? We we'll, we'll, yeah. we can come back to you through the town administrator with several proposals of how we can invest in the seawalls. Um, as a community and as individuals, uh, it, it was some several protracted steps need to go through. The betterments needs to go before town meeting. Okay, was. right, right. Yeah, the this packet that, that Mr. Ball gave us quotes a figure. Is tonight? Yeah, and, and it's got some very interesting pictures in there. I understand as well. Um, I support doing something if we can come up with a creative way to come up with the money. I've walked that area with, with Mr. Ball. And the figure he quotes in there is relatively small money to the, to the extent that it it probably does seem to be in reach for betterments, depending on the number of people that actually tra transfer their verbal agreement to the signing the checks. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, the figure that Mr. Ball quoted is you know probably low when you start factoring in everything else and the real costs and all that sort of stuff. But I, I think, Al, that would be great if you could come up with um, some something on that. The town has a very extensive, well-documented, uh, and recently revised and updated inventory of the entire seawall yeah. structures. Yeah, I've seen that. From the north to the south end of uh, Catholic, uh, excuse me, Humber, uh, with, with um, professionally assigned uh, priorities, costs, all that. The only thing missing in this whole program is a method of funding. Yeah, and uh, I think that that's something that has to be tackled um, by the board at some point. And what we can do is provide you with some uh, help. Now that uh, agenda item tonight that was postponed, that listed priorities. I, I'm, I'm assuming that those three or four ones that were no, those are that's actually a seawall project. Al, just to clear, FEMA only gets involved if it's storm related. Is that is that the linkage between the, those funds? FEMA went out and looked at the uh, seawall and determined which sections of the seawall were damaged by that specific storm that was declared a disaster. And the adjacent section might look equally damaged, but if they decided it wasn't this storm that did it, it was a different storm that did it, they'd only pay for this piece of it. Okay. Were, were any walls destroyed? The recent storm. It's very frustrating, I'm sure, for uh, residents along the seawall to see that this section on my neighbor's property is being repaired and not this portion of my property, or maybe this part of my property is, and that part of my property isn't. And it's so it's not at the it's town not selection. Kind of figure out mm -hmm. what we're going to do because there's no free money for repairing so If if I may, through the yep. chair, Al, John asked an interesting question. Um, how did the seawalls fare over this last weekend, where we had two back-to-backers? Anything? Okay. Sorry. Yeah, the only thing, I, I've, I've talked to Dave and I've talked to a few of the abutters, and I, I, that's another issue that maybe for another time for another agenda by an item, but um, the concern I have is that <coughs> the wall that's <coughs> encased is from like 1900. Yeah. You know, so you've got some, some obviously new uh, con uh, concrete on the face of it, and it's certainly been some changes, but the guts, the interior is, is very old, and so the, the question is whether the integrity is compromised, could be compromised. But you never know until you bore into it. Nobody wants to bore into it because it's going to create an issue. Their major concern is it's, you know, uh, it's kind of like if the, the skeleton isn't there, the whole body's going to fall apart, and that's their worry. And, and the fact that they're willing to um, put money down to try to fix it, which is unusual in the first place, I think is, is certainly encouraging. So 
Um, but again, I, I, I echo the same concerns, and, and I, I have to say, the betterment's an option. I think it's something we have to address sooner than later. Um, but anyway, thank Sean, you. Sean, anything else on the? Nope, oh, that's it. Sean. Um, no, I just wanted to um, let people know. Obviously, uh, the Situ Beach Association is going to have a Halloween party for the kids on Saturday, uh, three o'clock in the afternoon. Um, there's also an open house with the uh, Situate Fire Department uh, Saturday, yeah. which would be great. I think it would be great for parents with uh, kids go down. They do a very good job. They have uh, the fire trucks. They also have uh, fire prevention and what to do in the event of a fire. And it's a, it's a very nice event. Um, the third thing I was going to mention is that um, there's Halloween uh, trick-or-treating in the harbor, which will be the following. Uh, well, actually, it's going to be Halloween. Uh, right. Saturday uh, the 31st and it's going to be at 3.30 to about 5.30. Uh, again, the streets will, uh, apparently will be closed off. I don't know the ex extent of it. I know the merchants are working on it. I assume they will be touching base. Not assume. They will be touching base with the police department. But um, again, bring your children down. It's a nice event. And that's it, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, Tony handed me this. was a very important thing. We have to announce the uh, vacancy of the Situate Cultural Council. And this is very important because <coughs> it, should, it has to be filled the next couple of weeks so the town doesn't lose the funding uh, that goes to that council. That council funds a lot of small, uh, not necessarily large events, but small events, but really necessary events in, in, in groups that are really in need of money. Uh, without funding, of course, they wouldn't be able to do that. And unless they have a f uh, five voting members, they may not get that funding. We only have three at now, three members now. So if anyone's out there, including anyone in the room who want to serve on the cultural council, uh, we need two members. If you want to serve for one year, just to get us through this year, it would be appreciated. And uh, we'll see if we can fill that, f fill those vacancies and get that money because certainly we don't want to pass up. Pass up money from the state. We don't get that much of it. All right. So maybe Kim, if you don't hear of anybody, no one volunteers. Maybe let us know, and maybe we'll go out and solicit one or two people okay. to serve. So if, if we do get some applications, and you might be able to appoint them on November yep. second. We will. Yep. Okay. Um, Correspondence, I don't believe there is any. If there are none, the next item is adjournment. Move the board of select and vote to adjourn the meeting at uh, 8.23 p.m. Second that. Okay. We will uh, not be meeting before town meeting, Kim. Excuse me? We will, we will not be meeting before town meeting. No. no. So the next meeting will be um, the night of town meeting. 6.30, as, as we always have done. We invite everyone to come to town meeting. It's, it's important. Um, every year is important, but this may be more so because uh, of the budgetary cuts we're going through. The need for everyone to have their say. Uh, motion to adjourn. Did I get that? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good night, folks. Good night. Good night.